Well, I'm not here today with any fancy sermon. In Bible times, the preacher would get up and read a verse and then comment on it. And that's basically what I'm going to do today, making it short and sweet. Just enough for you to ponder and ask the Lord to enlighten you, because too many words garbled up the mind. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12. Please open your Bibles. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14, which is the scripture reading for today. Please say amen when you have it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Repeat that with me. Fear God and keep his commandments. Why? For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The end, I could just tell you right now, as Jesus did when he read Isaiah 61, this is the message for today. This is the sermon. Go home and think about it. For this is the whole duty of man, to fear God and to keep his commandments. But knowing the nature of man, how rebellious we are, we would probably be asking, why? Why should I do this? Why should I have to fear God and keep his commandments? In fact, it took Solomon a whole lifetime to figure this out. And he was considered the wisest man on earth. He tells us that he who is wise is one who learns from others' mistakes. But like him, we're human. We have to make our own mistakes. In fact, that's what life is about. It's a repeated cycle of learning from our own mistakes. But in the end, we all come to the same conclusion. Fear God and keep his commandments. Let us pray. Father God, praise be thy most holy name, for thou art our maker. You are the one that holds the power of life, and yet you are so merciful to us. For this, dear Father, we are thankful and we praise you. Thank you for your holy word that you inspired these men to write for our teaching. Your word is truth and it shall set us free. So as we receive your word today, Father, lift up our eyes to Jesus, for he is the word and our salvation. Cleanse us, Father, and make us whole again. This we pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's break these verses down so that maybe, just maybe, some of us can learn from wise old Solomon's mistakes. So Solomon didn't just come to that conclusion on his own. He was reminded that God had given these instructions a long time ago in Deuteronomy 10, verses 12 through 14. And not only did he remind him in Deuteronomy, but just like the silver thread that goes across the entire Bible showing us the sun, there is this golden thread which goes through the Bible that tells us what our call of duty is, all the way to Revelation 14.7. Revelation 14.7, do you know what that says? Fear God and give him glory. How do we give him glory? By keeping his commandments. For what? For the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. 
That's a whole other sermon right there. But let's go to Deuteronomy 10, verses 10 to 12. Tell me, say amen when you're there. We're going to stick to three areas in the Bible today, and I want you to open those, those verses and look at them. I want you to familiarize and refamiliarize yourself with your Bible. Amen? And it says, and now Israel. I ask you a question. Who is spiritual Israel today? That's right. We are. And what does the Lord, it says, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? What does it say? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today. What for? What for? For thy good. Why? Verse 14. Behold, the heavens and the heaven, the heaven and the heavens of heaven is the Lord's thy God. And guess what? the earth also, with all that therein is. Who does that include? It includes us. We belong to God. And therefore, we should fear him and keep his commandments. Now, what does it mean to fear him? Is it to be afraid? No. It's Are you, were you afraid of your parents? No. You loved them, right? And because you loved them, you did what they wanted you to do. Otherwise, they'd bring out the belts. <laughs> then we jump to verse 16, and he says, Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. So, basically, he wants us to humble ourselves before him and to love him. That's it. Tell me if this is not good advice and a good warning for us. Certainly it is. And when I read these words, it really, really hit me. Actually, I started this sermon three months ago. And, and it's been working on my heart the way that uh, the Lord is just so clear in Deuteronomy, in Ecclesiastes, at the end of the Bible. It's, it's just simple. Fear God and keep his commandments. And it will be good for you, right? You see, we're born, we live, and we die. What for? Just to be erased in eternity? Is that all there is? The funny thing is that when all is said and done, all the studying, all the planning, all the hard work, all the emotions that we go through, that's it. It's done. There's no going back. There's a saying in my country, I'm going to say it in Spanish first, dice eh, plátano verde, no, plátano maduro nunca se vuelve a verde. Y el tiempo que se va no vuelve. Translation, a ripe banana never goes back to green. And the time that has gone by will never come back. And that's basically the conclusion that Solomon was reaching as he went through his wise life. All is vanity. But wait. He said that in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. That's only the beginning of the book. In chapter 3, he starts to explain what this life is about. He tells us that there is a time for everything. Between the day that we're born and the day that we die, we do all the studying, all the planning, all the working, and the loving we do in our lives. And we wish it will go on forever. But it doesn't. And then in verse 9 of chapter 3, he reveals to us 
that God knows what is best. I'd like to read to you chapter nine, uh, verse 9 from chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes, but in the clear word. So follow me. So what do we get from all our efforts and labor? In this life, hard work is given to us by God that we find in Genesis 3.19. Then verse 11. But this was not his original plan. In the beginning, he made everything beautiful, and he created man in his image, and he put in man's heart a sense of destiny. But man will never fully understand what God does, for only he sees things from the beginning to the end. Conclusion, there is nothing better in life than for man to do good, which will bring him happiness as long as he lives. God wants man to enjoy his life and be happy and to find satisfaction in his work. And then verse 14 says, everything that God does lasts. There is nothing man can do to add to it or to take away from it. Whatever God does, he does it to help us love and reverence him e even more. Amen? Amen? So what do we conclude from these verses? It's not all vanity. God has put a purpose in our hearts, a sense of destiny. I would call that hope. You see, let's go back to the King James Version. Go to verse 22 of chapter 3. Verse 22 of chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. Amen when you get there, please. And it says, Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. And then he asks the question, for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Who, folks? Who will show us the end from the beginning? In my Bible, in that spot, I put in big, joyful letters, Jesus. Praise God. And hallelujah, because he is the silver cord that we see when we die, that glimmer of hope that we have. Amen? It's not all vanity. It is if we don't have this hope, hope of the coming of the Lord. And his promises and his words gives us the faith that we need to sustain all the vanities of this life. But now let's come to our present day. Revelation 14, 7. What is God telling us today? Revelation 14, 7. Open your Bibles. Go to Revelation 14, 7 because you should know it by memory. It is the same message that we see in Ecclesiastes 12, 14. Fear God and give him glory for the hour of his just, judgment is come. Is comes means it's here. Not tomorrow, it's here today. For we know not if we have tomorrow. The lesson we see in our lives every day should be that one, that we know not if we have a tomorrow. Ecclesiastes 12, 14 says, For God shall bring every work, not just some, not well, I'll see if I'll let that one slide, but every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, there is a reason why we need Jesus Christ. Just in case you were wondering, and he's the reason we should be celebrating not only this season, but all the time. Amen? So continuing in Revelation 14, 7, it says, And worship him 
that made heaven, earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. Now, as Adventists, we should know these verses by memory, because these are the verses that identify us, the three angels' message. Are we forgetting them? It's important that we don't, because of the time we live in. These three verses are our call of duty. This is the end time message. And you may say, Brother Kincaid, well, sister, let me see if I can say it like he says it. Well, sister, I've been hearing this message for the last 40 years already, and nothing's happened yet. Yeah, well, it's there in the Bible for a reason. And nothing, and if you're watching the news, you know that the time is closer every day. Verse 8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations, who? Us? All nations? She made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And boy, is Babylon falling. Just look around you. In fact, just look at our own lives. Are we drinking the wine of wrath? Don't look at me. Don't look at the person next to you. Look at yourselves. Are we drinking the wine? Or are we still the people of the word? Are we praying enough? Are we spending the time necessary with Jesus? Have we learned totally to depend on him? Because, folks, that's what we need. The third angel's message, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So here is the call of duty that we have today. You like that title, guys? Call of duty? Any of you play that game? No? Good. <laughs> call of duty. Here is the title. Here is the, the call of duty that we have for our day. Worship God. That's it. Not any religion, not any person, and especially not the beast or his image. Just do what wise old Solomon said. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. The end. That is the end. I told you the sermon would be short. I told you that we would be just reading verses from the Bible. Does that bring to you the sense of need that we have to be in the Word all the time? If we just read our Bible daily, we would find God's message, His Holy Spirit, touching our hearts on a daily basis. And we wouldn't feel the need of concern. We wouldn't feel worried. We wouldn't feel all the frustration that we go through in our lives. Do you understand what I mean? I know. We need the Word. We need Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Let us pray. Father God, how difficult it is in this world to do what you ask of us. Not because it's hard, but because we are sinners. But dear Father, we are so thankful that you sent your Son to erase the guilt and your Holy Spirit to renew our lives. Fill us, Lord, with your spirit and help us to do what is right in, before your eyes. Each one of us is a different world. 
And each one of us has different needs, but all of us need you. So please, Father, do not forsake us, even if we fail you. And thank you for seeing us through the eyes of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen.